I don't know about you, but mock-ups can be a huge pain in the ass, all right? They just can. They're kind of annoying to have to do over and over and over. And sometimes it's super frustrating because maybe you'll have one color of a mock-up for like a t-shirt, but then you want another color and you can't find that color. Well, I found some hacks, guys, and you are going to love them. We're going over my favorite little hacks today for mock-ups. I'm super excited to do that. But before we hop into that, I have got to show you something I am super pumped about. I've been working on for months and it's just taken a while for me to feel like it was exactly my vision. And now it's here. We have launched merch. Now, we have launched two different things. We have stickers and we have hoodies. I have to show you the hoodie because really that's what I'm most excited about. It looks super cute. I love it. So I hope that you guys will be able to see this. So we have selling digital right there on the front. The back is my absolute favorite. It is our catchphrase for the channel, design a life you love. And it's very big on the back. I absolutely love it. It is so beautiful. I do our merch through our website with fourth wall and they just do an incredible job with everything. These are the hoodies. I got this one in the blue and then my daughter got hers in the Heather Gray, I believe. I will have to check. But anyways, I'm super pumped about those. If you guys are interested in grabbing some merch, there is a link underneath the video. It should have all of the different merch. If for some reason it isn't linked because we've been having a little bit of an issue with the linking of that, then you can also just go to the website sellingdigital.vip and you can um, access them there. All right, let's get into the video. Okay, so we are in Canva now and I have two images already on my canvas. My canvas is set at 3000 by 2000 in case you are curious. And I have a shirt image here and then I have a coffee mug image down here. This image here I created using AI and then this image here I just pulled off of the website Pexels and we are going to be using both of these today. Something I want to state ahead of time is these tips I'm going to give are going to be working whether you are selling digital products or selling print on demand products. However, it is important that if you are selling print on demand products that the images you use reflect the actual product that you are selling. So what I mean by that is in this image here, we can see that she's wearing a worn, vintage style uh, t-shirt. And it's a really cute t-shirt. It's going to show off the design really well. Um, however, this might not be a good representation of the type of shirt that you are selling in your shop. So if it's a print on demand shop and you're selling a specific shirt, like a Bella 3001, then having this image would not be a good idea because this is not showing the customer what they are going to be getting. Same with the mug. So if this is representative of the type of mug that you are selling in your shop, then that is fine to use. If it's not and your mug looks different, then this would not be an image that you would want to use. So it's very important that we are always showing an image that reflects exactly what the customer is going to be getting. However, if you are selling digitally, then either one of these would work just fine because the item you are selling is not the t-shirt, it is not the mug, it is the design, the PNG file that is on the shirt or the mug. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't or if that's confusing, leave me a question in the comments down below and I will get back to you. So first up, we're gonna work on the shirt. So I'm gonna go to edit and the first thing I wanna show you is how we can do a magic edit. So with magic edit, you can either use the brush or you can use the click. I'm going to be using the click and then you just click where you want to make the changes. Now, it's very important that the wording you use is correct in this. I have found that it makes a huge difference. So as you can see, it won't let me click just the shirt. So that could potentially give us an issue and you'll see why. But if we are just saying change to pink, then it's going to change more than likely, all of this a hue of pink, and we don't want that. So right now we have a grayish color. So if we wanted to change the color to a pink color shirt, we would want to be very specific and say change only, and I like to use caps. I don't know if it makes a difference, but it's working, so I'm just sticking with it. Uh, change only the t-shirt color to a light pink, and then we'll click generate. 
And when it generates, it's going to give us four different options to choose from. Some are gonna be really wonky and then some are going to be really great. And then you'll go from there. But it's really cool how it's able to do this. So as you can see, our very first image could potentially work depending on what you are doing, of course. But as you can see up here by the hair, not quite doing it, right? You can tell that it had a hard time with this one. So let's look at our other options. We have this one here, which looks kind of similar to that one. We have this one, which is a little bit better, I feel, but not great. And then we have this one here, which I feel is our best bet. So we are going to keep with this one here and we'll click done. So the image is looking really good. We may want to crop things or adjust things just a little bit. And this would be the time to do that. If like me, you are using a square photo for your Etsy, I use only 2000 by 2000 squares. It just drives me crazy. I don't know why that the front image of Etsy is a square and then the rest of them are not. I don't like to have to try to line it up. I, that's just how I roll. So I do squares. So if you were going to make that change, now would be a good time to do that. And you could crop it just simply by clicking on crop and then cropping it down any way that you wanted to. We could lift it up if we wanted to just mo more so focus on the t-shirt. So I'm going to go ahead and just leave it like this for now. Now what I want to do is adjust the overall coloring. I want it to look a little bit brighter. So we're going to click on edit again, and then we're going to go to adjustments and we can do a couple of different things. We can either adjust the entire photo. And let me show you what I mean by that. Let's say we want to adjust the brightness of the whole photo. We could take brightness and we can move this up. And you can see that we can get it really blown out or really dark. Or if you like the background the way it is, but you just wanna focus on the, um, the foreground, you can click up here where it says foreground and it will only be adjusting the foreground. As you can see, we're moving this, but it's only adjusting the foreground. You can also do a selection. So let's do click. And then just like we did when we were doing magic grab, we're able to click different spots. So we can just click the same spot that we did before, and then we can adjust that only. So we can just brighten her up just a tad. That is what I'm going to do. All right, so that looks good. Now let's say we want to kind of blur the background a little bit. We could go to background. All right, and now it's selecting just the background that we can adjust. We can scroll down to where it has texture, it says sharpness, clarity, and vignette. So let's just adjust the vignette. And you can see how it gives it that shadow towards the outside, helping make the front more prominent. So that's something we could do. We could also adjust the clarity, but instead make it go down. So you can see that background there. See how with clarity went a little more blurred. This is where it started. And then we can make it more clear. All right, we can also adjust the sharpness. You can see that that did a similar effect of blurring the background a little bit more. All right, so I like that. So those are some tips that you could use for doing a t-shirt. So next, what we would wanna do is maybe put the design on here and see what it looked like. So here we go. I grabbed a mama design that I had created and I'm going to shrink that down put this right at a good spot on the t-shirt. All right, and then we can even lower the transparency down a little bit so that it looks a little bit more natural. There we go. And so now we would have a whole new t-shirt look to this. So this one is done. All right, so something to keep in mind is once you have made the magic edit adjustment of the color, you can't go back and do that again without losing all the other adjustments that you've made. So let me show you what will come up just so you're prepared. So if we went to magic edit again, and I said, change the t-shirt only to blue, we'll say navy blue. We'll have to click so that it knows where, and then generate. It's gonna pop up this message that says, magic edit cannot be applied within with existing adjustments. So you'll have to make a choice whether you want to reset the adjustments or keep the adjustments, which means it will do the magic edit of changing the color of the shirt, but then you're going to lose those other adjustments that we created, like making it a little bit brighter or blurring the background a little bit. So what I would do is I would start off with just the main image and then I would duplicate that image on multiple pages and do one at a time. That's what I would do. Now I'm going to work on the coffee mug and we're gonna do a little bit different on the coffee mug so you can see a few other different options here. So the first thing I want to do is crop this so that it's more prominent. Okay, so if we're going to use this for a main listing photo, we're going to want it to be more obvious what we're talking about here. 
So let's go ahead and crop that down. Done, and then we will make it larger to fit. Now, obviously, my nose itches. That always makes me think of my aunt. One year, I thought she was doing this, and she goes, my nose itches, and I thought she said hoes and bitches. <laughs> I hope she watches this. <laughs> anyway, so now anytime my nose itch or her nose itches or whatever, we're always like, hoes and bitches. <laughs> oh, good times. Anyway. So obviously the main thing that we want is we love this coffee mug. It's got the scene that we want. It's got the highlights and the shadows and everything. And it's got this little bit of steam coming up off of it. Perfect mug, right? But it's got something on it already. So we need to adjust that. So if we click on the mug, we go up to edit and we're gonna use the magic eraser this time. And then we're gonna use the brush and we will increase the size of the brush so that we don't have to do it as much. And we're just gonna brush over the entire logo style design and then hit erase. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna kind of do a little Photoshop situation and it's going to make it look like that was never there. So it does an amazing job at this. You can tell that it just took that off. If I showed a picture like this to somebody, they would never know something else was there. It made it look as if the highlights now go all the way down. There, There is just absolutely nothing there. So now we have a clean mug. So now I like to look at it as if this is how it started off and what would I want? I probably want the mug to be brighter because it's got quite a large shadow on it. So we're going to go back to the adjustments like we did on the t-shirt, click on adjustments, and we are going to first fiddle with the temperature. So we don't want the temperature to be warmer. I'm thinking a little bit colder. And maybe the brightness is up a bit. And you see how it's doing the whole background again? I want to change that. So we are going to click and I want just this exact section that it's looking at right here. I want the counter or whatever it is that it's sitting on and I want the mug. So now we're going to increase and we can see how everything is increasing. You don't want it too much, right? Cause then we lose those highlights. If you go too far, then you lose those highlights right there in the center. So we want just enough to make it brighter. I'm gonna go with right there. All right, so now all that's left is us adding a design on here. So I'm going to go up to elements and I actually picked one already. I picked this one right here, but you would obviously be choosing yours and you can size this to where it works for your mug. So here are the two mock-ups that I have created, but I do wanna show you a couple more things that could be an option for you depending on the products that you are showcasing. So let's say that I didn't want to put this here and I wanted to put a frame here so that it was just an easier drag and drop situation. Now that we have everything set up, we can create our own mock-up that we use continuously. So let's just type in frame and we can choose whichever frame we want. I'm gonna go with this one here and I'm going to put it right there. Maybe we'll shrink it down a tad. And now the cool thing with frames is that you can reduce the opacity and have that be um, already done for you, kind of saving yourself a step. So if you're going to be using this template or this mug all the time, and you're just going to be switching out the design, this might be something that would be really helpful and save you some time. So if we go up to reduce transparency, and let's say we always just want it to be at 95%, and then we save this, as a template. We could also save it as a brand template. Okay, we can go up to share and then we'll go to see all. And then you can actually save this as a brand template. And what that does is it goes into a separate section in Canva where you can go to and you can see all of your brand templates, making it really easy for you to just grab and use that template over and over and over again. So let's say that we did that and we've opened up this brand template that we created for ourselves. And now we just want to grab our design. All we have to do is drag and drop. If you click on there, you can see that it's at 95% transparency. So all of that is already done for us. No matter what we put in here, it's already done. So if I'm just going to get rid of this, there we go. Let's say I want a different one. I'm gonna grab this one and pull that one in. And now we have this design. And then again, it's reduced the transparency down for us and it's already done. The last thing I really wanted to show you guys was how we can use the mock-up section of Canva, the mock-up app. So I'm going to use this image here and I just got this image off of Google. Don't do that. I just needed something that was blank that I could use to show you guys. All right, so I just grabbed this image randomly off of Google and I'm going to click on edit. 
And again, this is just an example. Please do not go find this image. <laughs> you can create a very similar image on your own. All right, and we're going to click on create a mock-up template. If you don't have mock-ups, um, like how I just selected mock-ups in the apps, you'll have to click on apps over here on the left and then go to mock-ups and then you'll see the create a custom mock-up at the top. So it, like it did with Magic Edit, it's gonna give us four different options. And as you can see, one is the lid, one is the background, which could come in handy. And then one is what it's sitting on, like the, the stone that it's sitting on. But this one is perfect. This is the actual Tumblr itself. So if we click confirm, it's going to automatically create a template for us. So it's gonna basically create a custom frame locked into where we want it to be. And then I'll show you exactly how this can work. Let's type in cherry pattern. Got cherries on the brain because I've been designing for cherry stuff. All right, so I like these right here, this cherry design, that's really cute. So I'm going to select it so that it's over on the canvas and then we will wiggle it around until it goes inside of that. And there we go. So that is exactly how you will do it. You can double click and you can arrange where it's at on the left here. If you double click on your template, you can move it, all right? You can even tilt it. So let's say we want it to go this way, we can, or this way, however, which way you want it to show up, it will. You can even do any alignment. You can flip it around. You can hit fill or fit, and then you would hit apply if you made any changes at all. So we'll just move it over a bit. There we go. And then hit apply changes. Well, my friends, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and learned a little something new about mockups or really any type of different features in Canva that maybe you didn't know about. If you're gonna give something a try, let me know down below because I'm anxious to see what you guys think or maybe what you've learned, what you didn't know, or if you know something that I didn't go over, please make sure to share that down below because it's really important that we build this community of people who are willing to reach out to each other and help each other grow. If you liked today's video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up so it gets pushed out to all the other people who are struggling with their mock-ups or just wanna learn a few more Canva tips. And if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so that you get notified every single time I post a video. Also, don't forget to check out the merch and see if you are going to want something of your own to keep you all nice and cuddly. Go out there, go design a life you love, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.